Today I'm taking a look at this guy, the AFRO K100, all NVMe NAS. So quick rundown of features, Intel N100, four NVMe drives, tiny case. If you want to see more, come along in this adventure. So here's what I got in the box, the AFRO K100. Let's open it up and see what we got. It looks pretty nice. It's got uh, plastic wrap. Why does everyone feel the need to be like Apple level packaging these days? I would be uh, pretty happy if there was just like plain recycled cardboard. That's just me, I guess. So this guy is honestly pretty tiny. So in front we just have Afro, I guess that's the top. In front we have a power button. It uh, doesn't really make a sound, but it has a feel to it. So there's vents on both sides. I guess we'll see if there's any fan in there. In the bottom we have all the labels. So 20 volt, 3.25 amp. That's what, 70 watts-ish? 65? In the back we have DC in. We'll see if this is a real Type-C, like actual Type-C power delivery, or if they're just using a Type-C connector, which is bad. Um, we got two USBs. These appear to be Type-2. We have two USB-2s. And then these two here are labeled 10 gig, and they also have display port. So these are gonna be display out, multifunction connectors. We have an HDMI by itself and 2.5 gigabit ethernet. It's got a little arrow here, that's the front. In case you didn't know where the front is, now you know where the front is. And what else have we got in here? A nice foam packing ring, some cardboard, got manual, throw that out. I'm guessing this is the power brick. Yeah, so we got a Type-C power brick. It's branded Afro, and a Type-C cable. So of course, to do testing of this, I'm gonna need to put some SSDs in. I've got one M.2 just here to show you. I'm gonna put some other ones in when I actually do testing, but. So I dug the instructions back out of the trash. So it says, we have to remove the foot pad. I don't like that already. Foot pad has a snap structure. It requires a tool for removal. These are the tools I have today. So I didn't bring my iFixit toolkit down here. Probably would have been easy with a flat hat. I see how it is now. They are glued on, aren't they? Yes, the feet have these little wings that stick in. I personally would like to see just exposed screws, especially because this is a device that you're expected to open to put your drives in. There we go. So we've got a little metal cover here, which I think just pops off. I don't see anything. Oh, yep, there's screws in there. So we got screws on the side here holding it on. I think this is, has the fan. So we can see these are the EMI shielding and I can see the drive connectors down here. That was easy. So it looks like here it came with one SSD installed. I'm guessing this is the boot drive. So we got three other drives we can use. I guess I'll have to test if we can replace this drive and use our own operating systems. They also included a thermal gap pad for the SSD that came with it. So not for the additional ones. Now, while I'm in here, I want to take a look at the other side of the board. If you bought this, you probably wouldn't need to take it apart this far, but I just want to see how it's built, what kind of things are doing, what the cooling's like. So let's dig a little bit further. So I don't see anything immediately obvious. I mean, I see a screw that got stuck in here. Get out of there. Based on these slots here, I'm guessing that I'm supposed to lift up to free it from this screw and then slide it forward to free these connectors. Okay, so the board is one module. It's just held in by these four screws, which also hold the EMI shield. Not hard to get out. If you look at the bottom side of the board, we got their cooler. This looks a lot like a laptop cooler to me. So there's fins here. There's a heat pipe that runs around to the chip. And you can see it in there, but it's a soldered chip, obviously. Um, looks like they've got thermal gap pads on the memory here. So the memory is not expandable, of course. There's a fan connector here, which means this connector can't be the fan. So it looks like there's a coin cell in there. That's the CMOS battery. That's neat. There's a pin header right here, which does not appear to be labeled. It's just labeled TP3501. There's another one next to it that's not populated. So it could be a UART, probably isn't though. Got a power button and two LEDs. So before I get started testing on this guy, since he does use type C power, I want to see if it negotiates with another power brick I have how much power it uses, what voltage it needs, things like that, type C stuff. So I got the brick it came with hooked up with a USB type C tester. This will show me the voltage going across. 
and what the PD uh, negotiated. So I'll plug that in and I'll plug in the little NAS guy and turn it on. So it looks like he negotiated 20 volts, but he's not drawing any current yet. So I've also got him connected up with this other charger I have now and uh, it's working just fine. So it's not tied to their charger. Well, it's good to hear it uses the USB power delivery standard. No funny business with Type-C. So if you have a power bank that can output 20 volts, you should be good to take this thing on the go, which to me seems like the best use case for it because it's very tiny. So I got my Debian Rubik's Cube flash drive, and it's actually covering quite a few of the ports because it's a big flash drive. So I'm gonna install Debian on the 256 gig drive that this guy came with. Then I'm gonna boot it so I can take the flash drive out, and we're gonna take a look at the hardware. So I hit a bunch of function keys and I ended up here. I'm not sure exactly which one it was, but it was probably F2, F10, or F12. Looks like you got all the usual stuff. So I changed this to boot from USB, but the default was NVMe Open Oiler. So we'll go ahead and boot into my USB. Not really hard to get in the BIOS at all. Looks pretty standard for options. Not that surprising to me. The fan does roar up every time it boots up, but then give it 10 seconds, it quiets down, it's fine. So you've seen a Debian install, so I'll just uh, skip to the end here. So I named this guy Afro Man because he's from Afro. Let's log in and see what we got. So I'm going to start out by saying this guy has an Intel N100. Oh, please don't step on my keyboard, buddy. That's the keyboard. It's not for stepping. Like I was saying, this thing has an Intel N100. The N100 is a very low power CPU. It's six watts, I think, in this model. So it's not a powerhouse by any means. I know home labbers are like all about the N100 now because how power efficient it is, but it is PCIe Gen 3 with only nine lanes at the chip. So we got four SSDs here. They're not gonna be running at Gen 4 because the N100 just doesn't support Gen 4. And we're not gonna get four lanes each because again, the N100 doesn't support four lanes each. And we've got 2.5 gig, that's gonna need one lane. That basically leaves us with Gen 3 by two for all four SSDs at best and one lane for the 2.5 gig. So using this processor, the N100, there's basically no better they could do than that. And I guess if it's not that, then that'd be concerning. So let's check and see what it is. Oh yeah, it has a real tech nick, by the way. I know some people don't like that, but honestly, for Linux, it's perfectly fine. Don't forget too that Intel had bad nicks before, like the i225. So interesting, it shows up as having a Alder Lake Thunderbolt USB 4 controller. I didn't think the N100 chip supported Thunderbolt, so maybe they're just using the same hardware as some of their higher end chips and decontenting it on the N100, but it shows up in LS PCI. So maybe I'll have to plug in Thunderbolt to the Type-C port and see if it works. Okay, so here's our first device. Maxio technology, NVMe controller, DRAMless. Looks like link cap is Gen 3, so eight giga transfers by four lanes. And link status is Gen 3 by 2. Uh, first Samsung drive, this one supports Gen 3 by 4 and it's running at Gen 3 by 2. Next drive, Samsung supports running at 16 giga transfers, which is Gen 4 by 4, and it's running at Gen 3 by 2. And again, the last Samsung also running at Gen 3 by 2. So that leaves the Realtek RTL 8125, and that is capable of link cap. Uh, Gen 2 by 1 and it's running at Gen 2 by 1. So they did about as good as they could with PCIe lanes given that they're running the N100 chip. So it only has nine lanes. Eight of them go straight to the four NVMEs. One of them goes to 2.5 gig. So I guess they could have gone to like a five gigabit controller and tried to max that out, but they're not going to do much better with an N100. The N100 is just not a 10 gig powerhouse. So that's pretty much all I have to say about the Afro K100. It's tiny, it has an N100 CPU, they have maximized that N1 CPU as an all SSD NAS, it has basically nothing else, but the N100 basically has no ports left, so there's not much they could have added. The model they sent me at the time of this writing with the 256 gig SSD is $449. They have a version for $399 with no SSDs, I would get that one, but it's currently sold out. So you can probably do better in SSDs on your own. The SSD is not terrible that it came with, but it's only 256 gigs. And uh, if, you're, if you're building an SSD NAS, you're gonna put some decent SSDs in there. Now the bandwidth, like I said, it's gen three by two, 
which is still not a small amount of bandwidth for four NVMe drives. If you build a RAID array out of these, it's going to be much faster than your 2.5 gig NIC. Also, it's an N100, it's a six watt CPU. It's powered by USB type C power delivery. So this would make a great portable NAS if you've got to take it places. It doesn't have Wi-Fi though, not that I really expected it, but I guess you could add it over USB or something. Um, the software it comes with, I didn't even look at because it's so funky. Uh, I put Linux on it, Linux was easy, so that's a plus. No problems there. Um, it has some high-speed USB. It can do three display outputs, two of them over Type-C, one of them over HDMI. Um, 2.5 gig NIC, that's Realtek again. So this is really not a bad little box for the price, I think. So there's other things out there that are more expensive. This is a low-end CPU in a tiny box in a portable package. Hope you enjoyed this. I have a Discord server down below if you want to chat with me. I have a Kofi if you want to tip me. Afro, of course, sent me this unit, but no money changed hands, and they won't see this video till the end. So I make money on your tips and YouTube ad revenue, so like and subscribe. Oh man, I feel so bad saying that. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next adventure.